So let's move forward uh, in history. We have the Dark Ages, and you know, a lot of knowledge was monopolized by a few priests that got access to it, but most of the population was not Couldn't thinking read. about, yeah, philosophical right. things. And then we go to the 19th century. Classical liberalism starts. Um, who did she respect from this period of time? Uh, in my mind comes, for example, Frédéric Bastiat, which I think he was brilliant in, uh, in also using uh, simple examples by observing reality. I don't know if you know, he has a, a, a tale of, uh, let's put a tax on the sun. The sun, yes. yes. The myth of the candle makers. The candle makers, yeah. yes. And, and I like him because he, he also like ran, you know, like finding these concrete examples of the absurdities that sometimes people defend. So in the 19th century and, and about classical liberalism, what are the, who were the, the people she respected? Well, she would go back further first that, uh, to, the, uh, to John Locke. Okay. John Locke, although his deep philosophy is very flawed, uh, his political philosophy is almost perfect. He's the creator of the concept of rights. He's the one who came up with that in its full form. There were hints of it earlier, but he was the one who really developed it. The right to self-defense, the consent of the governed, the role of government being to protect freedom, not to destroy it, uh, the... Um, idea of Republican form of government with representatives, but not democracy. Uh, what, what's wrong with anarchy? He has a great argument. I mean, it's so quick, but it's great argument. He, his second treatise of government is a fantastic work, as is his letter concerning toleration, both on freedom of speech. Both of them are, are terrific, and she admired him. He's the and direct ancestor of Thomas Jefferson, who was the American founder that she liked best. Ah, well, I have a question about that. <laughs> okay, and then, then going into the 19th century, um, Bastiat, I believe that she liked. I know that those around her were reading him and liking him. I certainly think he's fabulous. He's also got interesting economic theories and economic sophisms and economic harmonies. There's two books on that. I don't think he got that as right, but he has a very interesting overview perspective. But he's also, you pointed out, I guess maybe being French, he has this dramatic flair oh, yeah. in his writing. Yeah. And Ayn Rand also went for the dramatic exactly. concrete. Yeah. In, in his little book, The Law, because you know he died when he was only 49 uh, from a lung disease. And, and in The Law, he says, until my lungs explode, I will defend the right of uh, the individual to be free. Paraphrasing is not exactly his words, mm -hmm. but he's like very dramatic in the way yeah. he writes. Yeah. Yeah. So among the 19th century philosophers that one thinks of, she did not like Spencer, whom she regarded as a collectivist because he argued for the good of the race, meaning the human race, not one particular race. Uh, and uh, John Stuart Mill, she regarded as the destroyer of the work of Locke and Jefferson, which he was. He was terrible. And he's usually thought of as a, an, an advancer of liberty but he isn't, uh, and he was a, a very much an altruist. And as you know, she favored the virtue of selfishness, not favored is too mild. She crusaded, made her life's work, right. the defense of the individual's pursuit of his own self-interest, right. rational self. 